I don't know who these this Scottish family party are, but I will never be voting for them. I don't think anyone should be voting for them because they sound like a bunch of far right scumbags. End of video. <laughs> I have just received one of the most ugly, disturbing bits of election media that I think I've ever seen up this way. I've never seen anything as bad as this in Aberdeen before in my life. So let me just put this on screen and we're going to have a quick read through this. Can someone tell me who the hell are the Scottish Family Party? Well, welcome to Stevie. Well, the answer to your question, of course, we're a political party in Scotland. Now, Stevie, as we'll see, is not happy. And the points is made in response to our little flyer are very similar to the points we've had from a lot of other people who've replied. So I'm going to use Stevie's video as a cue to responding to some of these points. Now, note here, Stevie doesn't say that he just disagrees with our policies. He says it's ugly and disturbing. And the other words that come up quite a lot in responses are vile, grotesque, filth, etc., we also get lots of messages from people that say, oh, thank goodness someone's speaking some sense. Someone's actually representing my views at long last. But let's start and listen to what Stevie's got to say. They value families as the strong building blocks of a strong nation offering financial assistance. So they value families. Like, that. what does that even mean? What Like, it just says they're offering financial assistance. Like, to who? To what? What? Well, the support obviously is to families. Now, okay, this is just a brief sentence on our flyer here. It's very compressed. But Stevie, if you'd wanted to find out more about our policies, how we would support families financially, you could have just had a look on the website and found out before making the video. But anyway, to, to summarize very, very briefly, every nation needs a next generation. Everyone in the nation needs this next generation. So it's only fair that a nation supports those who are paying to provide this next generation also known as parents. But the UK has a uniquely anti-family tax system. We would want to see that made more fair to families, reflecting the contribution that parents are making to society by bringing up the next generation. Now, Stevie doesn't seem too mad about this policy, so let's, uh, let's move on to the next one. We respect life. We oppose both abortion on demand and attempt assisted suicide. And... It took us a whole one section to get to the insanity. Abortion on demand. Assisted suicide. I don't think assisted suicide is even a thing in the UK. You can't, it's against the law. And opposing abortion on demand. Who is anyone to tell anyone not to abort a baby if they're in a... If that's not anyone's business. If people want to do that, they can do that. So, Stevie, what you're saying here, it's not just that you disagree. You say that we are insane. Our policies represent insanity. Well, first of all, with assisted suicide, you are, of course, quite right that it's against the law. But the reason we mention it is because it probably won't be against the law for very much longer. Because the Lib Dems and the Greens have already got it as their party policy to introduce assisted suicide. The SNP has just recently announced that they would begin consideration of assisted suicide through various means. Labour of the Conservatives, well, look at the Conservatives. Ruth Davidson recently has come out as a supporter of assisted suicide. Uh, the leader, um, you know, previous leader, Jackson Carlaw, he was a leading campaigner for assisted suicide. Douglas Ross, I don't know what he thinks, but I would be pretty confident that he doesn't really have any strong moral principles to bear on the matter. So assisted suicide, and additionally to just being straightforwardly morally wrong, we believe it would have a net negative effect on society. One of the main reasons for that is it would result in a culture of pressure on the elderly and the ill who would start thinking to themselves, I really should do my duty and finish myself off instead of being a burden on people. And I think that sort of pressure is inevitable in a society where assisted suicide is legalised. And that's the direction Scotland's heading. We would oppose that. Now, when it comes to abortion, Stevie, I think maybe you need a bit of training on being a pro-choice activist. Generally, they never use the word baby. Don't say baby like you did. You need to say fetus, or better still, clump of cells, or something like that. As soon as you use the word baby, it sort of gives the game away a little bit, doesn't it? You've really shot yourself in the foot with that. Because I mean, if someone wants to kill a baby 
before birth, that's fine. You're saying. What about if someone wants to kill a baby just after birth? Is that okay as well? When I mean, you say the value in life in the womb is insane. Well, I would say not valuing life in the womb is evil. Let's just put it that way. Let, let's call the spade a spade. I mean, one of the things I've learned in this campaign is that, okay, we know our LGBT policies. I mean, there's hardly any of them. It's not something we put, focus on hugely. Or the trans issue, where, you know, we've got things to say about that. We realize these are hot button topics and we expect people to flare up in the front of the and a really angry, hysterical response. But the thing I've learned in this campaign is our pro-life message is equally contentious, equally contentious. And just one thing, not from Stevie, this is from another email we got. One person said, how can you say you value life and yet be against abortion? That just makes no sense. That just shows the state we're in. The pro-life message is so unknown and so alien to people that they, they live in a world where their views have never been challenged. And so for everyone with pro-life views, um, if you've got a reason why you think this is why we shouldn't really talk about it, this is why we shouldn't talk about it publicly, I really would challenge that and say, well, perhaps all these reasons are the reason why we're ended up in the state we're in today. But certainly as the family party, we're going to talk about it very loud and clear. Then we've got this. We protect children from vulgar and corrupting sex education. So they want to stop teaching kids about sex education. That's mental. That's idiotic. That's just so bad. Now, Stevie, what our flyer said was we oppose vulgar and corrupting sex education. But in your mind, it seems to have turned into we oppose all sex education. I mean, just to try and illustrate this for you, if you were a leafler from the Labour Party and it said we oppose low pay, would you think, oh, the Labour Party oppose pay? They think workers shouldn't get paid at all. Uh, no. I mean, this reminds me of one of our policies. I'm being quite serious here. One of our policies is to introduce critical thinking lessons in school uh, throughout the age range to try and teach reasoning and logic to help people to be able to analyse arguments uh, rationally and come to sound conclusions. Now, when it comes to sex education, we want sex education. It would be facts-based and it would include all the facts, including the facts about marriage, for example, and its benefits, and also the facts relating to the likely outcomes for different choices in terms of relationship types and sexual activities. We'd also help young people to hear different moral perspectives on sexuality and sexual relationships. So what we're opposing is the vulgar and corrupting bit, not sex education in general. And for more information on this, uh, see our website. I'm prepared to be shocked. And then we've got, we support parenting, fair tax allowance benefits for families with a full-time parent. So what that tell says is there is if you've got a kid and oh, if you're a family, we will give you money. If you're a full-time parent, you'll get money. So, I mean, that is try to target people with nothing. That's disgusting. Now, Stevie, you say here we're, we're targeting people with nothing. To be honest, I can't quite follow your reasoning here. But let me explain what our policy is. Currently, all government policy, Westminster and in Scotland, is pressurising families towards the twin income model where mum and dad go out to work as much as possible, preferably full time. Our policies are intended to give families the choice. So if it is that one parent actually wants to be at home with the children, then that's going to be more feasible financially. Okay, now, if you regard that policy as disgusting, you really need to explain why, because I can't see it at all. We demand academic rigour and good behaviour in the schools. Sorry. What does that even mean? What What is academic rigour? Because, Stevie, that's fine. I sometimes come across things that I don't understand. But what I do is try and look them up or read up a bit and try and see if I can get to grips with it. But let me explain. Academic... I mean, in this context, what we mean by academic is related to the study of traditional school subjects. Let's put it that way. Rigor, what do we mean? Well, thoroughness, depth, not avoiding the challenging sections, facing and overcoming difficulties, insisting on high standards. So I hope that's uh, cleared that up. We want good, good behaviour in schools. So how are you going to do that? How are you going to enforce good behaviour in schools? Is this, is this a, a backdoor way of taking back the cane? Is this, is this, are you advocating the strap? 
Like, what the hell is this? Bring back the cane and the strap? No. I mean, that comment just comes entirely from your imagination. Nothing remotely to do with the family party's policies or our flyer. What we do oppose is moves to abolish punishments in schools. We think our view is perfectly moderate and reasonable. Children need punishing sometimes. Within Scottish education, I think a rather extreme and unbalanced view is gaining ground or is, well, is dominating now. And that's the view that punishments are not necessary. All that's needed is mini counselling sessions instead. Now, you say you're outraged at us saying we want to ensure good behaviour in schools. I mean, what's your view? Do you not want to ensure good behaviour in schools? You're quite happy for there to be poor behaviour, and frankly, kids run in riot in many cases. Well, if that is your view, that's fine. Just go ahead and vote for any of the parties in the Scottish Parliament at the moment, because none of them have got a clue how to improve discipline in schools. Now you've got this nugget. We promote marriage. Stable family life benefits, ev stable family life benefits everyone. Sorry, but marriage is cool. I've got nothing wrong with marriage at all. One day we could all hope to be married, isn't it? But it, you don't need to be married to have a stable life. There's plenty of people in the world that have got a, quite a stable life without having that bit of paper in their life. It's just stupid. That's just mentioning things like marriage for the sake of marriage. Again here, Stevie, I'd say your views are not really unusual. Of course you can have stable family life without marriage. In the same way that some people smoke 60 a day, a hail and hearty when they get run over by a bus when they're aged 96. But it's a lot less likely. And married couples are much more likely to stay together and that benefits children massively. And some statistics from the UK a few years ago. Uh, if parents are married when a child is born, the chance of them being uh, together when the child's five years old, 92%. Whereas when a child's born to cohabiting parents who don't subsequently get married, the chance of them being together on the child's fifth birthday 25%. So we're not talking about some minor differences we can just about discern here. We're talking about a huge, huge gulf. And we care about the well-being of children in particular, also adults and wider society, but particularly children, which is why we promote marriage. You say marriage is just a bit of paper. Well, no. It's a solemn public legal commitment to lifelong exclusive faithfulness that has massive, massive significance and consequences then we've got this nugget we protect free speech opposing all hate speech legislation what that basically says is the scottish family party want to be able to call people of color darkies they want to be racist they want to be nasty to people they think that they should have carte blanche to be as offensive to people in society as they want to again stevie i'm afraid i have to question your logic here for example, I don't want adultery to be a criminal offence. Does it therefore follow that I want to commit adultery, or I think people ought to commit adultery, or I think it's a good thing for people to commit adultery? Well, of course it doesn't. I mean, your suggestion that we're somehow wanting to make racist comments, I mean, that is so baseless and ridiculous that I'm not even going to bother uh, answering it. Hateful speech is bad. Uh, we absolutely agree with that. But the question is, what's the best way to deal with it? Our view is that the best way to deal with it is through more speech. And the other problem with hate speech legislation is who decides what's hate. Now, Stevie, to be honest, I'm certainly glad it's not you, because you seem to be ascribing hatred to people like me, which is completely wrong. And so in a culture where your ascription of hatred to me is actually quite widespread, that makes me fear hate speech legislation. And then we have this last one. We have this last one here. This really, really annoys me. We oppose transgender, I, transgender, ideology, ex, transgender ideology, especially the confusing of children. Sorry, what? Can someone tell me what transgender ideology we are faced with? There's no transgender ideology. There's just people in society who want to be themselves. Transgender ideology. Well, I'd say that's the idea that changing gender or adopting a new gender identity is a normal, natural, healthy, and even a necessary thing for some people to do. And we do indeed believe that that is confusing to children. It invites them to speculate. Oh, I wonder what gender identity I am. It waters the seeds of uncertainty. Uncertainty that might well have just faded away 
if left to its own devices, but it's stoked up by this emphasis on transgender uh, ideology. And at the end of the day, it can lead them down the road of damaging so-called treatments that often do lifelong harm. And young people are led down this road at school and also by the NHS. So we oppose this because we think it's harmful to the well-being of children and young people, in fact, people of any age. Now, if people experience some sort of gender identity disorder, obviously they need help, they need support, but that support should be geared towards bringing uh, their sense of themselves and their sex into congruence with each other. And another issue with the transgender uh, ideology is increasingly in society, we're being forced to accept things that we don't believe are true. So, for example, if a man says that he's now a woman, we have to act as though we believe it or speak as though we believe it. Uh, but that's not right. People shouldn't have to act and speak against their conscience or against their true beliefs. There are also the issues around women's sports, women's spaces, etc. So looked at as a whole, the influence of transgender ideology in society is negative. So we would push back against it on every front. There are people in society, it's not any of our business to judge people that feel that they are not in the correct body or they want to be something else or they feel they should be something else. That's their prerogative. It's none of our business. And no political party should ever be like fighting against transgender people because that's just so bad. Like okay, shouldn't judge people. Well, does that include having an opinion? I mean, when we're talking about transgenderism here, we're not talking about deciding who's a good and a bad person. We're talking about what's true, what's beneficial for individuals and for society in general. Now, we shouldn't be forced to affirm what we might see as people's unwise or wrong choices or beliefs. Now, you say we're fighting against transgender people. Again, you've really got to read what we've written on this flyer a bit more carefully. Look at the key word, ideology. It doesn't say we oppose transgender people. We oppose transgender ideology. That is a belief system, a way of thinking, and it expresses itself in a lot of political policies. So it's a perfectly valid area for a political party to take a view on. And this doesn't amount to attacking people. Now, I can see why you think that, because if you, you know, consume the mainstream media, I suppose, that's the message, isn't it? Anyone who disagrees with this is sort of being not very nice and hateful and uh, wants ill for various people. But that is not the case at all. And hopefully on reflection, you'll be able to realise that. Let's look at the back of it. Moving beyond the stale old issues, we need some fresh ideas, thinking about new ideas. The ce our central focus of strengthening family life could help solve many problems in Scotland, from drug abuse to young mental health, from crime to population decline. So they think they're going to stop all the problems in society by banning things, by stopping people doing that. And you know what? It is beyond stupid. It is beyond silly. It is beyond just terrible. Because we all know that prohibition has never stopped anything from happening. Prohibition never works. People will do what they want. They don't do what they're told. And Stevie, again, I'm sorry to say you really seem to have struggled to understand what we're saying here. I mean, for a start, your argument against prohibition sounds to me like an argument against law full stop. We have a law saying don't murder people. You're not allowed to murder people. OK, I mean, do you think with that? Oh, there's no point in doing that. You never stopped anything by making it illegal. No point in having a law against murder. Is that what you really think? Anyway, but moving from what you're imagining to what our leaflet actually says, it says strengthening family life helps alleviate many social problems. In other words, many problems for individuals, uh, in effect. What's that got to do with prohibition and banning things? Absolutely nothing. Our policies and the ethos we would promote in society is to do with broadening access to mum and dad privilege, if you like. Virtually anything you can measure to do with children and young people, there are better outcomes for children brought up by ideally their own mum and dad in the family home throughout their upbringing. We want to widen access to that privilege as broadly as possible. Now, what's sinister about that, I really cannot imagine. Is that, This is a classic example of how the far right get into politics and how the far right use their ideology and they tie their ideology up with things that emotionally trigger people, like families, like children, like school, like free speech. Now, Stevie, you're claiming that you can see through what we're all about. You can divine 
our true motives and beliefs and they're far right. Now note through your video, I would say you're pretty angry and condemning, not just disagreeing, but calling us evil and sinister, basically. And I can understand that because it, I mean, it's part for the course. We hear it from all directions quite commonly. Why does that happen? It's because a lot of people, I would suggest Stevie, including yourself, you never really hear socially conservative views. You just hear straw men, misrepresentations of them, demonized versions. Now, if you just watch the BBC, for example, then what we present are perfectly reasonable views. They seem beyond the pale. They seem outside the bounds of civilized debate. And that's been allowed to happen because people who believe things like we do, generally, I've got quite a poor record of presenting them publicly and making them part of public debate. And things will only get worse if people don't start speaking up publicly. And that's our calling in the Scottish Family Party. So Stevie, I would love to have a chat with you. If you wanted to come on to our live stream, we could do a little interview. You could, we could discuss these issues in a bit more depth. Who knows, we might meet in the middle on some of them, but we're always happy to enter into respectful uh, dialogue. And I'm maybe, maybe you're keen to do that as well. Right, thanks for watching.